So over the past few videos, we've been building up uh, how to calculate the first order correction to the energy due to a weak field Zeeman effect. And we found that our uh, treating our Zeeman Hamiltonian as a perturbation in the coupled basis. This Hamiltonian is already diagonalized. So our first order corrections can be calculated using non-degenerate perturbation theory. This can be simplified to the following expression. And we were left calculating the expectation value of the Z component of the spin. In the last video, we showed what's known as the projection lemma, which says that the expectation value of the spin is equal to the expectation value of its projection along the total angular momentum divided by the uh, magnitude of the total angular momentum. And the reason this helps us is because this is a vector equation. So it's actually three separate equations. This tells us that the expectation value of the X component of the spin is the uh, expectation value of uh, S dotted with J along JX. divided by the magnitude of the total angular momentum. This also tells us the expectation value of the Y component of the spin. And most importantly, it tells us the value for the expectation value of the Z component of the spin. Okay, and this, so this equation is these three equations combined into a single one. This is a vector equation. And what we're looking for was the expectation value of the Z component of the spin, which we now have over here. So this is the Z component of the total angular momentum. So now what we have to do is substitute in this value over here and continue our calculation. So an expectation value is given by uh, the operator we're interested in, in between brackets. Again, I'm only specifying J and MJ because the other two, uh, or I should say the other three quantum numbers, because we also have the spin, are, uh, aren't are involved in the, in the calculations. But you should always remember that there is an N, L, and S in each one of these states as well. Okay, so this first one is our numerator over here. And this is divided by uh, the expectation value of J squared. This is just J squared, uh, H squared, J times J plus one. All right, so what we've done here is replaced the expectation value of SZ by this quantity over here and rewritten it as part of our first order correction. This state is an eigenstate of the JZ operator because we've specified MJ.
So over here, we get an H bar MJ from our J set operator acting over here. Okay, and this was again because JMJ is an eigenstate of the J set operator, and the eigenvalue is given by H bar MJ. So that's how we got this H bar MJ over here. To calculate this quantity, We use the fact that the orbital angular momentum is equal to the total angular momentum minus the spin. So the square magnitude of the orbital angular momentum is equal to the dot product of this expression with itself. This is j squared plus s squared minus two s dot j. Uh, here we can combine s dot j and j dot s because each component of the total angular momentum commutes with each component, each corresponding component of the spin. So isolating for s dot j, which is the quantity we're interested in over here, we get that this is one half j squared plus s squared minus l squared. Okay, so we just brought this over to the other side and brought the l squared over here and divided by two to get rid of this two. So now we can substitute in this expression in here. So just rewriting it out. This is what we had. We said that S dot J is equal to one half J squared plus S squared minus L squared. We substitute in this expression over here. We have an extra two. Then I'm going to write the other uh, numbers that I've been, that were still specified, but I haven't written. And these are L and S. The spin has always been suppressed because the spin of the electron is always one half. But as was mentioned in the uh, in the videos on fine structure corrections, uh, this is always equal to one half. So it's not really specified, but it's there. Now, the important characteristic of these states is that they are all eigenstates of J squared, S squared, and L squared. This is just h bar squared j times j plus one. This is h bar squared s times s plus one.
and L squared. These are also eigenstates of L squared. So this operation is now trivial to do. We just plug in the corresponding values that we have here. So we get what we've had so far over here. And now we start applying uh, each one of these uh, equalities. So J squared operating on this gives you this value over here. S squared operating on this state gives you H squared S times S plus one. S is always one half because we're looking at an electron. An electron always has spin one half. So that ends up being three quarters. And then we apply minus L squared to this state over here. By this expression, this gives us H bar squared L times L plus one. We can factor out an H bar squared and cancel it out with this one. We can factor out this H bar MJ so that our first order energy corrections are as follows. Oh, and there's also, oh yeah, I have it here. Okay, so this is our final expression for the first order energy corrections for a weak field Zeeman effect. This quantity over here is known as the Lande G factor. No, oh, sorry, it's this, this whole quantity over here. So we can re-express this, our Lande G factor, M, J. Okay, so what do we learn from this expression? For different states, uh, for states with different M, J, we get a different correction to the energy levels. So what that means, if we were to draw our diagram again, just for the first two energy levels of hydrogen, we had that there was one state here, one state there, and two states over here. Each one of these states had twofold degeneracy because you had mj equals to one half or mj equals to minus one half. Each one of these states will get a different correction from the Zeeman effect. So these energy levels will split. This state as well had a twofold degeneracy because of different uh, MJs. This one will also split into two energy levels. Because we now have an orbital angular momentum of one, there are six states that are degenerate over here in this level. And these turn out to split into five separate states. And you can check what combinations of L and MJ will result in these states. So what the Zeeman effect does, uh, as was observed, is it splits the energy levels of atoms so that multiple more bands are observed than uh, 
would normally be observed with the fine structure corrections. Okay, so this is this energy difference is due to the Zeeman correction, each one of these. Okay, so this was uh, a lot of algebra and uh, we won't, as I said before, we won't go into the intermediate and strong field semen effects as they also require quite a bit of algebra. And this also concludes our exploration of time independent perturbation theory. Uh, this was a final application of that formalism. In the next video, we'll look at another method that can be used when uh, we can solve the Schrodinger equation for a given Hamiltonian, and we also can't use perturbation theory. And one of the methods that's normally used for that is called the variational method, and we'll begin introducing that in the next video.